Hu Jintao was president of China from 2003 to 2013. His era is considered an era of growth where China's GDP went from $1.7 trillion to $10.48 trillion, which is a 713% growth in just a decade. Hu Jintao's successor is Xi Jinping, the current president of China, whose era is seen as controversial least outside China. Xi Jinping is one of the most educated leaders of a country. He holds a PhD degree and is a vivid believer in Marxist theory. Xi Jinping became president of China in 2013, and the GDP at that time was $10.48 trillion. Today, it's $19.9 .9 trillion, and 100% growth in around a decade is good, but according to China's standard, it's just mediocre performance. Mao Zedong's government is believed to kill around 40 to 80 million people through persecution and starvation. Xi Jinping seems to continue the traditions and has a bad human rights record. Though Xi Jinping believes people live a happy life is the biggest human right, so for him, free speech and freedom are just secondary and prosperity is the biggest human right. As once he said, it was the greatest contribution towards the whole of human race made by China is to prevent its 1.3 billion people from hunger. Want to know how Xi Jinping took over China's leadership? Watch the full video. We at Business Chronicles tell the stories of extraordinarily successful people. Please subscribe to our channel to help us in making more videos. Xi Jinping was born on June 15, 1953. He is the son of Xi Zhengzhen, a former comrade of Mao Zedong, one of the founders of Communist China. His mother is Qi Jin. Growing up, Xi had two older sisters and an older brother. Xi's father was well placed in the Chinese Communist Party, even holding a number of prominent positions. These included Vice Chairperson of the National People's Congress and Vice Premier. However, he lived a simple life. Xi often wore hand-me-downs from his older siblings. Him and his brother even shared bathwater. Xi started school at Beijing No. 25 school before transferring to Beijing Baiyi School. In 1963, however, his father was purged from the CCP by leader Mao Zedong. At the time, the aging Mao had grown weary of his political rivals and the party shift from true communism. He thus began a purge of those he perceived to be behind it. Xi's father was taken off his position in Beijing and relegated to laboring in a factory in the distant Luoyang, Henan. Three years later, Mao initiated the Cultural Revolution. As the revolution began in 1966, Xi's education was cut short. His family was publicly persecuted because of their father and his mother was compelled to openly denounce their father. They were ridiculed before crowds and his father was even jailed in 1968. These hardships drove one of Xi's sisters, Xi Heping, to suicide. After his father's sentencing, Xi was sent to labor in the rice fields of a rural village in Liangjiahi, Wenai, Yunchuang County. He was 15 years old. He worked there for seven years, living in a cave house. He once tried to escape and return home, but he was arrested and taken to a labor camp to dig trenches before being returned to Liangjiahi. In 1971, Xi was accepted to the Communist Youth League of China after applying unsuccessfully seven times. In 1973, he tried to join the CCP but was continuously rejected because of his paternal ties. He finally got accepted in 1974 on his 10th attempt. He would eventually reunite with his father after Premier Zhao Enlai ordered it. In 1976, Mao died and in 1978, Xi's father and many old guards persecuted under Mao returned to power. In 1974, Xi joined Tsinghua University in Beijing, where he studied chemical engineering. He graduated in 1979. While in school, he studied Marxism, Leninism, Mao Zedong thought. He also spent time studying under the People's Liberation Army and doing farm work. After graduating in 1979, Xi went to work for his father's former subordinate, Geng Biao. Biao was then the Secretary General of the Central Military Commission. It is here that he garnered some military experience. In 1982, Xi headed to Zhengding County in Hebei, where he worked as a deputy party secretary. A year later, he received the promotion to party secretary for the country. 
This marked his first real ascension to power as the senior most official in the country. Throughout the 1980s, 1990s, and 2000s, Xi served various roles in four provinces, starting with Hebei from 1982 to 1985, Fujian from 1985 to 2002, Zhejiang from 2002 to 2007, and Shanghai from 2007. During his time in Hebei, Xi traveled to the United States to learn modern agricultural practices and tourism. He stayed in Iowa with an American family hosting him. Upon returning to China, he went to Fujian province to take up a new role as mayor of Xiamen. He worked in Fujian for over 15 years, even holding posts in the Fujian Municipal Party Committee. In 1997, he was elected as a member of the 15th Central Committee of the CCP. In 1998, Xi returned to Tsinghua University where he studied ideological education. He graduated in 2002 with a doctorate in law and ideology. In 1999, Xi was promoted to vice governor of Fujian. In 2000, he was named governor of the province. As governor, he made ostensible efforts to increase private investment in the province and boost its nascent economy. In 2002, Xi took up a role as acting governor of the neighboring province of Zhejiang. He served in this capacity for some months before becoming provincial party committee secretary. That same year, he was elected into the 16th Central Committee, officially marking his rise to the national political stage. From 2002 to 2007, Xi oversaw considerable economic growth in Zhejiang. Growth rates averaged 14% per year. He also took a strong stance against corruption, earning him attention from national media and China's top leaders. In March 2007, Xi was moved to Shanghai province to serve as party secretary after a scandal forced out his predecessor, Chen Liangyu. He served as party secretary in Shanghai for seven months before earning a position as a member of the Politburo Standing Committee. Xi was an ambitious man who strictly followed party rules and avoided hardline controversial positions that would attract criticism from different party factions or hamper his career. He often just echoed the party's position on most issues, developing a reputation for himself as a team player keen on preserving the unity of the party. That same year, he was appointed executive secretary of the secretariat of the CCP Central Committee. In March 2008, Xi was elected vice president of the PRC. As vice president, he oversaw Beijing's preparations to host the 2008 Summer Olympics, managed the affairs of Macau and Hong Kong, and headed the CCP's Central Party School. Xi also undertook several overseas trips to Latin America, North America, and Europe, sharpening his foreign policy skills while championing China's national interests. On November 15, 2012, Xi was elected General Secretary of the CCP and Chairman of the CMC. His carefully crafted reputation as an agreeable person served him well on the day of the election, as he was viewed by many as a consensus candidate, acceptable to different party factions. A couple of months later, on March 14, 2013, Xi was elected President at the 12th National People's Congress in Beijing. Since becoming president, Xi has initiated several reforms in China, revamping its military and economy. Xi restructured the People's Liberation Army, transitioning it from an army-centric system to a joint command system similar to Western countries. He has also modernized it and replaced 60 of the 19th Central Committee's 66 members with newcomers, promoting young guards to top military positions. In 2016, he was named the Army's Commander-in-Chief. For the economy, Xi has promoted the opening up of China while keeping the CCP as a critical enabler of trade and commerce. He has expanded the role of private banks, making it easier for them to issue mortgages, allowed international investors to buy Chinese stocks, and even announced the One Belt, One Road initiative in 2014, the world's biggest infrastructure project yet. In 2015, when the Chinese stock market fell, Xi stepped in to remedy the situation. In his first term, Xi promoted the industrialization of China and supported its manufacturing industry to export more. He even appeared before the World Economic Forum in 2017, hailing China as a leader of globalization. 
In his second term, however, he changed tune, advocating for a domestic consumption-led model of industrialization with tech self-reliance. He has even set aside over $100 billion to ensure Chinese tech companies can meet their semiconductor needs internally. The Chinese economy under Xi's rule has doubled from $8.53 trillion in 2012 to $17.73 trillion in 2021. In 2021, Xi declared that his administration had lifted 100 million Chinese from extreme poverty. He also called for a more inclusive growth model with the private sector doing more to achieve a common prosperity of the people. On the reforms front, Xi has led several anti-corruption campaigns, jailing top leaders and disciplining more than 100,000 party officials. In 2015, Xi removed China's one-child policy and replaced it with a two-child policy in 2016 and then a three-child policy in 2021. In 2014, Xi encouraged greater abidance to the constitution, transparency in legal proceedings, and public participation of ordinary citizens in making legislation. In 2018, Xi oversaw the removal of presidential term limits, meaning he could rule for longer than two terms. This made him China's most powerful leader since Mao. He remains China's paramount leader. Xi Jinping was lucky to be born into a very powerful family. His father was a prominent politician. Xi followed his father's footsteps and used his father's influence to rise from the ranks. In a society like China, family plays a very important role. And if you are not very powerful, you are always vulnerable, as one day big fish can easily swallow small fish. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel to watch more videos like